Hey everybody, welcome back to a new power station review. Today we're looking at the brand new Blue Eddy AC180. Now we've been waiting for a long time for a 1000 watt hour device from Blue Eddy and they finally provided. Now this has lithium iron phosphate batteries. It's rated at 1152 watt hours of capacity and it has a massive inverter at 1800 watts. So this provides big power, yet it's super portable. Now previously, one of the best options from Blue Eddy for portable power was the EB70. Now this model is a bit outdated, it does not support fast internal wall charging, it does not have a very good display, and does not have smart app connectivity. But Blue Eddy has upgraded all those things with the AC180. You can see it's just a little bit taller, it's actually near the same width and depth, you just have a little bit of height added for a larger battery and a larger inverter. Now let's break down the key features for the AC180. Now on the front you have four outlets, this is where you can plug in your appliances for 1800 watts output. You have the upgraded display. This has smart app connectivity, so you can connect with your smartphone. It has a USB-C 100 watt power delivery port and a 12 volt socket for your output. There's also a wireless charging pad on the top. Now for charging input, you can have up to 500 watts of solar panels to charge this up, and it does have fast wall charging at up to 1450 watts. So you can charge this fairly quickly. Now this also supports UPS functionality. Now the launch price is actually pretty decent at $799. Now that's actually a pretty decent price point, but how does this actually perform? Well, in the rest of the video, I'll do extensive testing on the power station, so you guys will know if this one is right for you or not. And then at the end of the video, I'll put it through my power station grading system, give it a score of one to 10, so you guys can compare it to all the other power stations I've tested. Now I'm really excited to see how this one performs. We're gonna jump into testing the 1800 watt inverter first. Let's go ahead and see how it does. One advantage of the AC180 is that it's lightweight and portable, but that does not mean it can't pack a punch when powering tools and appliances around the house. In my first test, I wanted to plug in my portable air compressor into the AC180 to see how it would handle the load. When switching on the compressor, the AC180 didn't struggle at all with the surge of the motor. The air compressor pulls around 1000 watts continuously while running, which was a breeze for the 1800 watt inverter. To test a larger surge load on the inverter, I wanted to see if the AC180 could power my 10 inch compound sliding miter saw. This is a large tool and it pulls quite the load on startup. Here's a demo of me cutting a 2x4 of cedar. You can see the surge wattage went above 2100 watts when the saw started up and the AC180 powered the saw just fine. In the next test, I wanted to see how long the AC180 could run my full-size basement refrigerator. This is an older model and the fridge compressor pulls around 200 watts when running. After the fridge ran all day, I checked on it before going to bed and the battery capacity was sitting at 22% remaining. It ran for a total of 18 hours on this test and still had capacity to spare. Now let's go ahead and check the quality of the power that we get from the Blue Eddy AC180 inverter. By pushing the inverter to the maximum output for 15 minutes, we can see if it holds the full rated wattage without overheating or experiencing voltage drop. Once I enabled the inverter and connected up my max load, it was pulling around 1800 watts. After the test had been going for a few minutes, I checked the output with my oscilloscope. It was a super crisp sine wave at 60 hertz, and using my voltmeter, I could see it was sitting at a really steady 121 volts output. Very impressive voltage output even under max load. Once the test had been going for 11 minutes, the power station fans were at their highest speeds. When testing the loudness of these fans, I was getting around 54 decibels at three feet away, and here's a demo of what the fans sounded like. Now these fans are pretty average compared to other models I've tested on the channel. Within the next couple of minutes, my stopwatch hit the 15 minute mark, and the Blue Eddy AC180 passed the max load test. While continuing to power the 1800 watt load, I wanted to see how well the power station fans were dissipating heat. Throwing some images on the screen, you can see that the power station stayed pretty cool below 90 degrees on the outside of the case. The hottest measurement was where the exhaust fans were blowing out the air on the right side of the power station. What about using the AC180 during a power outage? This has the ability to act as an uninterrupted power supply or UPS. This means that when you have the power station plugged into a wall outlet, it can bypass power straight through to your devices. And if it senses the grid power goes down, the power station will automatically swap over to the batteries inside within the rated 20 milliseconds. To test this out, I had my micro desktop workstation running a stress test, and I also ran a 24 inch LED monitor and my studio lights off the power station inverter so we could visually see the lights flicker during the transition of power sources. I simulated five different power outages by unplugging the power station from the wall while running the load. Four of the five times the PC was still running after it was unplugged, 
and it appears the UPS mode will work fairly well when the power goes out if you want to keep your PC running during an outage. Some of my viewers power sensitive electronics like ham radio equipment or portable speakers on their power stations. For that reason, I like to test for noise or interference that the inverter may put out. Using my dirty electricity meter, the reading was around 1820 millivolts of noise when the inverter was enabled. To confirm this, I plugged in my guitar amp into the inverter and there was definitely noise on the inverter and this is what it sounded like. Due to this noise, I wouldn't recommend running radio equipment or portable speakers on the inverter, but it should work fine for other appliances. The final tests that I completed on the Blue Audi Power Station inverter were both for the AC capacity and AC idle tests. When draining the power station at a 0.2C rate via the AC inverter, I was able to pull 990 watt hours of capacity as the state of charge hit 0%. The result of 990 watt hours is 85.9% of the advertised capacity. And these results are right on par since my goal is to hit at least 85%. But what about how much power is used as the AC inverter is enabled and sitting idle? I started with the power station at 100% state of charge and left the inverter enabled for 10 hours with no load. And when I came back, it was sitting at 88% state of charge, meaning the inverter had used around 12% of the battery or about 1.2% per hour. These results are a little better than average since most power stations use around 1.5 to 2% per hour while the inverter is left on and enabled. Now let's break down the performance of testing the AC inverter. Well, first off, we hit the rated 1800 watts output. It surged to 2100 watts. It has a pure sine wave and a full 120 volts output under peak load, so really good there. Now, UPS functionality worked pretty decent. During our capacity test, we were able to hit 85%, which is my goal, so that's good there. The only thing that kind of was not perfect about this is it does have a little bit of noise on the AC inverter, so if you're running sensitive electronics like speakers or ham radio equipment, it's not gonna work the best with that. But overall, very capable, puts out a lot of power. The fans aren't very loud, so mostly good things on the AC inverter for the AC180. Now swapping gears a bit, let's go ahead and test the DC output, which is your 12 volt cigarette plug and your USB ports. Now, the purpose of this testing is to see how much power we can get out and to see what appliances will work on the DC output. So let's go ahead and jump into that. The first thing I checked on the Blue Eddy AC180 was to see if the DC output was regulated. The benefit of having a regulated DC output means the voltage stays the same even while draining the power station down to 0%. When I plugged in my battery load tester, it was showing 13.4 volts, and looking at the specification sticker, the nominal voltage of the battery pack is 32 volts, so the output is in fact regulated. Now the DC output is a bit limited on this model with only one 12 volt cigarette connection. I tried to pull as much power as possible using my battery load tester, and I was able to pull right around 129 watts. Any higher wattage and the power station shuts off the DC output from being overloaded. At 129 watts, you'll be able to run most 12 volt loads like CPAPs, 12 volt fridges, and DC fans off this connection, but you will have an issue trying to run diesel heaters or 12 volt air compressors, or even two devices at once because there's only one connection. I guess you could purchase a 12 volt splitter adapter like this, to get two devices connected at the same time. Why would you only put one port, Blue Eddie? This is the first power station I've tested in a long time to feature a wireless charging pad on top. It's rated at a full 15 watts, and when putting a smartphone on the top, it successfully started to quick charge. Some of my viewers mentioned they like the convenience of wireless charging, so it's a nice feature to have. I then moved on to testing all five USB ports. This power station supports one 100 watt USB-C power delivery port, and four USB-A ports. I connected my EcoFlow River 2 Pro up to the 100 watt port and I was successfully able to charge it at 100 watts. This charging speed will work really well when charging your mobile devices. I also tested the four USB-A ports by plugging in a USB light, my smartphone, a small USB fan, and a portable LED lighting kit. And with all five ports in use, I was able to pull around 116 watts total from the power station. In the next test, I wanted to get an idea of the maximum output that the power station could handle with both the 12 volt outputs and the USB ports powering all their devices. After connecting everything up to all the ports, I was able to pull 239 watts continuously from the DC output. If you're trying to run a small DC fan, CPAP, or 12 volt fridge overnight, it's important to make sure that your DC output won't automatically turn off after a given amount of time. In order to test to make sure this didn't happen, I plugged in my Iceco Go 20 12 volt fridge into the 12 volt cigarette plug and let it run overnight. I came back after 22 hours and the DC output was still powered on and the fridge was running. The battery had only dropped down to 75% during the test, meaning you can get a very decent runtime on a 12 volt fridge using the AC 180. 
The final test I completed on the DC output were the idle power usage test and the DC capacity test. I like to see how much power the DC output uses while sitting idle if left on for a long period of time. I started the test at 100% state of charge and checking in 10 hours later, it was sitting at 94% state of charge, meaning the DC output is somewhat efficient and only uses 0.6% per hour while sitting enabled with no load. In the next test, the AC180 is advertised to have 1,152 watt hours of capacity and while draining the power station completely down via the 12 volt socket at 10 amps, I was able to pull a total of 981.7 watt hours over an eight hour time period. These results were about 85.2% of the advertised capacity. Now summing up with the results for the DC output testing, it does have a regulated DC output. We didn't have any auto shutoff settings, so running a 12 volt fridge or a CPAP overnight is gonna be just fine. Now we were able to pull max power from the USB ports, which was good and we were able to get 85% of the advertised capacity as we discharged this down to 0%. So those were the good things. Now, a couple of bad things here. The first thing you'll notice is there's only one 12 volt socket. So plugging in two devices is not an option unless you buy a splitter. And the other thing is we're limited to 129 watts before it would shut off from being overloaded. So not that much power available. It's fine for your smaller devices, but be aware if your device pulls over 129 watts, it will shut off from being overloaded. In the next section of the video, I wanna go over all the charging basics for the Blue Eddy AC180. There are two charging ports on the power station. The first port is on the front top corner near the screen. This is a 7909 barrel connection. It supports 12 to 60 volts DC input with a limit of 10 amps. It supports up to 500 watts charging input. On the side of the power station, you have an AC charging port. It's awesome that Blue Eddy has gone away from noisy external charging bricks on most of their power stations. Out of the box, you actually get three different charging cables, a 12 volt car charging cable, an AC wall charging cable, and lastly, you get an MC4 charging cable for solar panels. So it's nice to have all the cables provided in the box. Now when connecting the Blue Eddy to a 12 volt power source, you'll see around 100 watts charging input. This will take around 12 hours to fully charge the power station when it's completely empty. You can speed up the 12 volt charging time by taking your car battery's 12 volts and doubling it up to 24 volts with a small boost converter, this hack gives you around 190 watts charging input and will cut the 12 volt charging time down to around six hours. I have a full video on using boost converters to speed up power station charging, so check that out if you're interested. Now because the AC180 supports 60 volts input, we can also connect a 48 volt server rack battery to charge it up. Now in this test, I'm using an Anderson PowerPole to 7909 adapter plugged into the DC port. And when I connect it up, I was able to get 500 watts charging input on the AC180, which was maxing out the charging port. And this just shows you how useful these server rack batteries can be to extend the run times on your power stations. Now, the fastest way to charge the AC180 is by connecting to an AC power source. The Blue Eddy actually has three different charging modes that you can adjust on the Smart App, standard, turbo, and silent charging. When set to standard charging mode, you'll see slightly over a thousand watts charging input. When set on turbo charging mode, you'll see around 1400 watts input with the fans being a little louder. And when set to silent charging mode, you'll see around 300 watts charging input. And I really like the flexibility these settings give you to either charge quickly or to keep the fan speed to a minimum. Now, what about dual charging the AC180? When I connected up both AC charging and DC charging sources at the same time, the power station would actually share the charging input between both power sources. I noticed that it would max out the DC input first as a priority, and then the AC input would come in and fill in the rest of the charging amount per the setting that you have in the app. For example, when charging on standard mode, I was getting 190 watts input at 24 volts, and the AC charger was putting in almost 900 watts of power and when setting it to silent charging, you can see it maxed out the DC input and the AC input filled in the last 100 watts. I like seeing this preference to DC charging. Pretty cool integration of dual charging on this power station. I also wanted to test pass-through charging or the ability to charge and discharge the power station at the same time. In this test, I had the DC output, USB ports, and AC inverter all enabled while charging the AC180 at the same time via AC power. Looking at the screen, I was running a 300 watt load on all the outputs and it was charging at 500 watts input. I didn't have any issues both charging and powering all the loads at the same time for over an hour. In the next test, I wanna take the Blue Eddy AC180 outside and demo a few different solar arrays to see if we can hit the maximum charging input via solar panels. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some solar testing with the Blue Eddy AC180. Now for the solar conditions, I do have some high clouds. It's mostly clear, so I think we're gonna get really good results still. 
So we have two different arrays that we're going to be testing with. This one here has four 180 watt Bouge RV solar panels. They are wired in a 2S 2P configuration so we don't go over 60 volts. And then over here we have three new power 180 watt solar panels wired in a 3S configuration because these do not go over 60 volts. They have a really low VOC and I have that plugged into the power station first. So let's see how many watts we're getting. So it's pretty bright outside, but you guys can see on the screen, 467 watts charging input. So just a little bit shy of the 500 watt limit. Now I think we would have been able to hit the full 500 watts charging input if this had a 12 amp or a 15 amp charging input limit. But at 10 amps, we're gonna be kind of limited on the amount of power that we can get into it. So let's go ahead and test with this array here. Once again, I have this wired in a 2S 2P configuration. So we're gonna be over paneling it a little bit, staying under 60 volts, but we're gonna put more amps into it. And the power station is gonna automatically limit the amps. So here's the wiring for this solar panel array. You can see these two are in series. These two are in series. Then I have them going into a parallel adapter. So using the Bouge RV solar panels wired in a 2S 2P configuration, we are getting 412 watts charging input. Hope you guys can see that it's pretty bright outside today. So pretty interesting results. Even with a full 720 watts of solar panels, we did not hit the 500 watt charging input limit. And that's because the limitations of the Blue Eddy AC180. For example, we can't connect three of these together in series. It will go over 60 volts and damage the power station. And with them wired together in a 2S 2P configuration, we're seeing 40 volts at 20 amps and it limits itself to 10 amps. So we're only getting half the power from this entire array. Now, of course, there are tons of different solar panels that you can use, but out of the ones here in the video, I would only recommend using two of these Bouge RV 180 watt panels in a 2S configuration. Or if you wanna purchase these three new power 180 watt solar panels, they do not go over 60 volts, even in the cold temps in the winter, which is pretty impressive. So I'll include the links down to all these solar panels in the video description. Okay guys, I'm back inside. Let's talk about the actual results here. Now remember there's a 500 watt limit on the DC input, it has a 60 volt cutoff, meaning you can't go over 60 volts or damage the power station and 10 amps. So if you have 20 amps or 30 amps going in, it's gonna limit to 10 amps. That's just how it's designed. So it's gonna be pretty hard to get the full 500 watts with most 12 volt panels. I put two 12 volt panels in series and we got around 400 to 425 watts. Now it will depend on your actual conditions, but just expect around 400 watts average. Now, if you have special charging input from either a 48 volt server rack battery or from uh, solar panels that you can put in a 3S configuration, like those new power 180 watt panels, you can get closer to the 500 watt limit. So not bad, but just keep in mind that 10 amp charging input limit is a little bit restrictive on getting the full 500 watts. Now for the actual AC input, I love that they've gone to an internal charger. There's no external charging bricks. The fans are also really quiet while it's charging and you have the three adjustable charging limits. Now you also have dual charging and pass through charging. So this is actually a pretty capable device when charging it up. Now Blue Eddy has a brand new smart app. One thing that I really like is the new contact us feature. I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but let's go ahead and break down the actual devices. Now we have the Blue Eddy AC 180. We can connect to it here. Once it connects, you can see the state of charge on the screen, your input and outputs all here. You can actually turn on and off these inputs and outputs remotely, which is really cool. Just turn those on. And then it'll show you the watts going out on each one. Now there are a ton of different settings. You can come up here, click on the settings. You can change the name of the device. You can turn on and off eco mode. You can change the charging speed to standard turbo or silent. You can adjust the power lifting mode, which is basically for purely resistive loads. So if you wanna run an electric heater that pulls over 1800 watts, this will drop down the voltage below 120 volts so it can run that. Now there is a firmware upgrade feature so you can keep the firmware up to date, fix bugs, things like that. And then under advanced settings, you have the ability to change the Hertz output, factory reset the device, or you can change um, this option called grid enhancement mode. Not sure what that is. There's nothing in the owner's manual about that option. So maybe that's a new option, but overall very good smart app. It connects very easily, binds right up to the power station and you can control everything remotely. Now the AC 180 comes with a five year warranty. And I want to talk about some of the changes that they're making with their customer service over the last six months. 
Now I have had some complaints on my older videos and I held off for doing any videos from Bluetti because I wanted their customer support to improve. And they put a lot of money into it, a lot of resources, and I think it's getting there. Now, one of the best things they've done is they've upgraded their smart app to have a contact us option. And there's a call option or an email option. Now under the call option, you have three different numbers. I called the USA number and I spoke to someone over the phone, no hold times. And there was really good English. There was no accents at all. And I was able to ask questions about the Blue Eddy AC 180. So good experience there. Now I, I also looked at the email option and there are so many emails worldwide that you can click on if you'd prefer to contact via email. Now you should get a response within 24 to 48 hours depending on when you send the email and they should be able to help you with this. Now I've heard a lot better things over the last six months about Blue Eddy customer support. Now I will tell you, usually people will leave negative comments but they won't leave positive comments. So it's kind of hard to know where the balance is because anybody that has their issue resolved, they're not gonna come to my video and say, hey, it's working great. <laughs> they're just gonna come and complain on my videos about Blue Eddy customer support. So it's hard to know if it's really making an improvement in their company. So please let me know down below if you've had a positive experience about Blue Eddy customer support or if you've had a negative one. I want to know if their customer support is improving because they're putting a lot of resources into it to match some of the other bigger companies. And I'm hoping that they can improve their customer support because they have really good products, but they need the customer support behind it to keep everything running. Okay guys, we're here at the end of the video where I take all these results. I have this paper covered front to back with notes on the performance of this power station. And we put it through my power station grading system, give it a score of one to 10 based on its performance, its price, feature set, and any issues that we find. Now this is really helpful because it's not just my opinion, it's the facts about the power station. So I'll include the link down to this spreadsheet in the video description so you guys can see how this did versus all the other power stations I've tested on the channel. Let's jump into the actual score. Now there are 10 points available with all the information on the screen. Let's jump right into it. Now the first one, does this charge up to 100% within four hours? Yes, it does. We'll give it a point there. It does support pass-through charging. The inverter has a really good sine wave with 120 volts output, but there is a little bit of noise, so I'm gonna take a half point off there. There is a regulated DC output. It has an informational display and smart app connectivity, so we'll give it a point there as well. It doesn't have any auto shutoff settings. It has UPS functionality that functioned really well. It did meet 85% of its advertised capacity on both the DC and AC capacity test. It does charge up to 100% within five hours using solar panels, and the last point here, the price per watt hour, is it under 80 cents? Yes, it is at $799, it's 69 cents per watt hour. So very good pricing on this power station. Now taking all these points, it's a total of 9.5 points out of 10 points available. Now 9.5 points is pretty respectable. Now this is in direct competition to the EcoFlow Delta II. They have very similar specifications. In fact, if you wanna compare these side by side, check out the grading sheet down in the video description, and you can actually see the specifications and the performance side by side to see which one works best for you. Now in the rest of the video, I wanna talk about the pros, the cons, and my final thoughts on the Blue Eddy AC180. Now jumping into the first pro, this has lithium iron phosphate batteries rated at 3,500 charge cycles till 80% of the original capacity. So what does that mean? Well, that means you can use this daily for 10 years and you'll still have 80% of the original capacity in the batteries inside. So lithium iron phosphate lasts so long. They're also much safer, and they just add a teeny bit of weight versus the other option available in other power stations, which is lithium ion or NMC. Now there's a reason why Blue Eddy, EcoFlow, Anchor have all upgraded to this newer, uh, well, not newer, but newer trend, right? Lithium iron phosphate is because people want more value and they want safer power stations. If something goes wrong with lithium ion batteries, you guys will definitely know it. You've seen Tesla cars that have caught on fire or electric cars, those use lithium ion batteries. I've had my own share of lithium ion batteries that have gone boom. And well, it's just not safe to have that much power in a small enclosed space if something goes wrong. So just FYI, the only benefit to lithium ion batteries, NMC, is that they're a little bit lighter. It's two to three pounds difference. Is two to three pounds difference worth it, in your opinion, versus longer run times and safer battery chemistry? In my opinion, no. 
I would much rather go with something that's gonna last a lot longer, be much safer, and it's gonna weigh a little bit more. So thumbs up to lithium iron phosphate for me. Kind of a rant, sorry guys. The next pro would be that this has all the features that people are looking for. Wireless charging, really nice display, smart app connectivity. It's got a large inverter that puts out pure sine wave power, 120 volts. It accepts fast wall charging, 500 watts of solar input, UPS functionality. Man, this has got a lot of the features, right? And you know, that's what people are looking for. So that's the next pro. The final pro that I can think of is the price. For a premium device like this, coming in at $7.99 on launch, really good, right? 69 cents per watt hour. Now let's go ahead and talk about the cons. Now there's a few cons that stand out. The first one being that this only has one 12 volt cigarette plug and it's limited to 10 amps, 129 watts. Now, if you wanna use this for any high DC output, it's not gonna work. You're gonna be able to power a 12 volt fridge, a DC fan, things like that. But you go to your higher power stuff, you're really borderline with the diesel heaters. Maybe some will work, most won't. Um, 12 volt air compressor won't work either. If you're trying to power multiple devices off one port with a splitter, you have to be really careful. So anyway, first con, limited DC output with, via one port. I wish they would have put two ports and my personal opinion would have been amazing if they had a 25 amp or, D, uh, or 30 amp DC output. That would have been really cool on a device of this size. The next con would be that the inverter has a little bit of noise on it. So for the ham radio guys out there or people wanting to play you know, music on a speaker through the AC inverter, you're gonna have just a little bit of noise on there. And maybe the final con is that this doesn't uh, have expansion batteries. Now, it's not a requirement, but some people like that option so that they can expand this. But one of the cheapest options to expand your power station is by going out and purchasing a 24 or 48 volt battery and just plugging it directly in right here. And that's what Blue Eddy advertises that what they can do with their batteries is you can buy one of their expansion batteries, buy a $100 adapter that plugs into that battery, and then it has a 7909 barrel port that plugs right in here. So expansion battery from Blue Eddy, but um, you can do the same thing with your own. Uh, DIY expansion battery. You know, that's basically the pros and the cons of this. Now, in my opinion, this is kind of a jack of all trades. It does some things really good and not so good at others, but it's a really well-rounded device. For example, this will run a full-size fridge during a power outage just fine. Yet you can take this camping, it's portable, lightweight, you can move it around. So it's not built to be a full home backup setup and it's not built to be a full van life build, but it's a good mixture of both. So I'd love to get your guys' thoughts and opinions on the Blue Eddy AC180. New device from Blue Eddy has a lot of really good features and upgrades over previous models. So really good thumbs up to Blue Eddy for listening to customers, but it could have been perfect if they went a little bit farther. So. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching the review of the Blue Eddy AC180. Throw a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Give me a thumbs up if you also like the content. These extreme testing videos on these power stations take a ton of time to put together, but hopefully they're valuable uh, to people that watch them. Anyway, I'll throw up a couple of videos that you guys can check out. I have a ton of solar panel comparison videos, power station reviews, DIY projects. So if you're interested in that type of thing, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.